Kicking off things for us tonight is our surprise guest speaker, the one and only former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Governor, good to see you. How are you? Thank you so much. Welcome, the Governor. How are you? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, we got awesome. a lot going on right now. I yeah. know how much the issue of the veterans' issues matter. The president's given three speeches in three days on the military, and I don't get the sense of urgency. Where's the 1 800 number to say if you need help and you're a vet and we promised you help, we'll get it to you tomorrow? Yeah. Do you feel there's a lack of urgency? I think there's a lack of understanding on our commander in chief's part of what the mission of the military is and why it is that we owe a debt of gratitude that's manifested right. in benefits paid to those who've already earned them uh, when it comes to uh, what our military is all about. And, you know, that was really evident in his uh, speech the other day to the cadets at West Point. West Point. Um, weak speech where truly it was, it was illustrated by his words that he just doesn't understand why our young troops, especially are those who would volunteer to sacrifice all for the freedoms in this country. Yeah, and then of course we have the outing of a CIA operative in Afghanistan. And then the sort of this new Obama doctrine emerges where, well, we'll use force, but we won't use force, NATO, the UN, and I'm thinking, what about, and, but I do believe in American exceptionalism, and I was thinking to myself, where is the Reagan doctrine? Yeah. You know, okay. very, very different philosophy. Well, what is the Obama doctrine, and do you Weakness. believe in it? Remember that? Remember that? Mr. Reporter Weakness. from wherever. Uh, no, he, it's, it's beyond isolationist even. Again, he not being a believer in American exceptionalism, in what it takes to remain a superpower and not for any kind of arrogance in our country, but to actually be that shining light, that, that yeah. beacon upon a hill that other countries can look at and count on to be an example, they wishing to emulate it. And that, that was the Reagan doctrine. Did, Dick Cheney last night said this president yeah. projects weakness yeah. again and again, and that as he goes around the world, they, other leaders do not respect or count, believe they can count on the United States anymore. Right, and that was a great interview with the former vice president when he said he, this is a very, very weak president, and it's, it's not that uh, we are weak as a country, but we are so unreliable now under Obama. But even more than the effect that it has on other countries, my concern is the effect that his his doctrine, his policies, his attitude has on those who are volunteering to serve this country, to those whom we owe a, a yeah. debt of gratitude. How could we let them down? And by the way, what does it say about if we're going to let our veterans down, we can't get a website up and running in four years and now $700 million. What, is, what does that mean for everybody else's health care down the road? Well, precursor. Somebody exactly. I know mentioned death panels. Yeah. Is the VA a death panel for many? That, that's a great point. It, I remember it, when Governor. It, how it many is. think it's a death panel for the VA? It is. Yeah. Right? Well, that is what government run health care will result in is inefficient. It's, it takes away choices. And isn't it ironic that those who are willing to sacrifice all to put their life on the line to allow the freedom of choices in health care and economic decisions and everything else, our soldiers, our airmen, our Marines, they're the ones getting screwed by the no. VA and our commander in chief is in charge of this Think ultimately. This. The, 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 our prisoners at Gitmo, there is there is uh, one doctor for every 1.5 prisoners. They're receiving better care. One for uh, we have one doctor for every 35 vets. There's something wrong with that. Well, and in many uh. respects, illegal aliens in our country yeah, today yeah. are receiving better health care, more benefits than some of our troops. It's, it's really scary it uh, as a time. There, you, have, you are going around the country. You are endorsing a lot of candidates. This was the first time I supported Jack Kingston, and I know you supported somebody else in Georgia. Um, and now they're together, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Karen um, Handel. You want, I am concerned that the Republican Party in Washington is timid. And, and by that I mean, I'm looking at uh, Bobby Jindal is coming up next and, and uh, Rick Scott and Governor Perry and Kasich and, and Walker. All these guys are doing great jobs as yeah. conservative governors. Mm -hmm. 
Where's the vision that if the Republicans get power, they're going to do certain things? I don't hear them articulating what conservatism is. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. feel the same way? Well, the, the politicians in Washington are, of course, isolated within a bubble. They need to get out here with the people, with yeah. the real people who are working hard for this country. They're the true patriots. They need to stay connected with the people. Governors, mayors, uh, yeah. just your normal average citizen is able to do that. The bigwig politicians in Washington, D.C. evidently feel that they're a bit above the rest of us, and they do become uh, isolated from what uh, the wisdom of the people is. You see, I think the Republicans in Washington think they're going to coast into re-election because Obamacare is a disaster. We now learn that the first quarter growth is negative 1%. We might be back in a recession. And what I would prefer is a more inspiring vision. I have five things on my list. I want a penny plan to balance the budget. Good. I want a consensus plan, health care savings accounts. Good. I want what you want, which is drill here now, yeah. right? Yeah. Drill, baby, Tap drill. Yep. drill yep. All right, drill, baby, drill. I want to secure the borders, and I want school choice. Oh, well, that is common sense, Sean. That's your problem. You exercise common sense, you know, and, right. and that, too, is That's is, a big problem I've had my whole life. <laughs> is absent from, from those who are um, in, in this kind of elitist group making the decisions for us. But yeah, how about something practical like that? Yeah. Republican leadership, put those five bullet points down in writing. Ask candidates if they will support them and if they will do all that they can to, to um, ensure that they are become policy for this nation. It's as simple as that. And then people understand what it is that the Republican platform is all about and what it is that we intend and will do for See, the people. Mark Levin was on last night and he says no, he doesn't hear the Republican Party talking about limited government anymore, mm. balanced budgets anymore. I, I don't hear any inspiring message. And I'm like, guys, if you get power, what are you going to yeah. do? Well, you know, they're not going to just, we are not going to just coast in no. um, into leadership positions. And you know why? Because the mainstream media is supposed to be the referee is not doing a fair job, obviously. Yeah. So we have that against us in our message also. So we have to work even harder and uh, really kind of ratchet down some things and talk about limited government. But that's the beauty of the Tea Party grassroots movement too, because the Tea Party is all about bottom line, limit government and allow the people and individualism to grow. What do you make of this Tea Party establishment schism? Because it's real. I, at least in my view, it's yeah. real. There is a divide. There are a lot of people in the Republican Party that think they don't like what you're doing when you support a Tea Party candidate. They get angry. Yeah, isn't that funny? Because, uh, you know, Tea Party candidates, for the most part, are just saying, hey, it, you know, Tea Party, we're taxed enough already. Yeah. It's the acronym Tea Party. Uh, there's nothing radical about that. You sound like that. Reagan to me most of the um, United we stand, divided we fall. And if those who still believe in the place in the Republican platform, whether they're a, a, ashamed to be associated with the Tea Party or not, and I'm not ashamed of it, I'm, I'm proud of Tea Party Patriots you. working so hard, uh, that needs to be our, our foundational mission there is yeah. staying united. All right, you have a big impact on the political process. An endorsement from Governor Palin means a lot to these candidates. Uh, I know you're on the road. I ju you just rattled off your schedule before we came on the air. What is your plan between now and November of 2014? And do whatever I can to help and not hurt. And that is to, to be out there finding some of those candidates, many who are, are not on the political map yet, certainly those who are underfunded and, and not well known or not doing mm -hmm. well in polls maybe, and getting people to hear from them and getting people to understand what it is that, that they stand for, because I'm only going to choose those who stand for constitutional conservatism, those you. who will stand for those five points that you have just pointed out yeah. for the rest and of so us. Not only just say it, mean it, and yeah. fight for it. Yeah. You know, I like I like when Ted Cruz fought. I was shocked that he was attacked by his own party. Yeah, and that's sad. That was it, sad. That, that's sad. And because he he threatens the permanent political establishment yeah. in in D.C. and. Uh, Speaking of Ted Cruz, we promised him reinforcements yeah. for Ted Cruz, for Mike Lee. That's why we need T.W. Shannon. That's why we need Manus. That's mm -hmm. why God, all, all these guys who are here supporting Cassidy, all these guys. And, and they're working so hard to get these good candidates in there because they right. understand Let, we promised them reinforcements. Let, I have one last question for you personally. A lot of people, if I bet, how many people, don't get too loud, how many would like to see the governor run again? Oh. Would, would you consider that? Run for what? Dog catcher? No. Well, uh, whatever. Um, there 
are millions of Americans who can do the job in elected office. But very office. few Americans, if they write a Facebook post, have as much impact as you. Well, I, I, right? I, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll see. You know what? Again, whatever I can do to help and not hurt. You're the, you're, this is the first time you duck in my question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Governor, great to see you again. Thank, Thank you for you so being much. with us. Yeah. Governor Palin.